Kelvin Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I get into the uh, technical parts of the bill, uh, I'd just like to retell the story about why I've, I've decided to be a man that stands up and speaks out about sexual violence. When I was the principal of Kaitaia Intermediate School, uh, I heard of 13 instances in three weeks where children in the Kaitaia area had been sexually abused. I called a meeting of uh, teachers, um, principals and uh, support agencies in the community. There were about 35 to 40 people in the in the staff room when we had this meeting, and I said, uh, this is the reason I've called a meeting. 13 instances of sexual abuse in the last um, three weeks. I have to say that they weren't all uh, sexual abuse instances that occurred at um, Kaitaia Intermediate School, although some of the children were. Um, there was a deathly silence and a bit of fidgeting, and, and then someone finally said to me, well, what do you want to do about this, uh, Calvin? Why have you called this meeting? I said, I don't know. I just want to blow this issue out of the water. It's unacceptable. There was a bit of silence and um, a bit more fidgeting, and someone finally said, well, have you given it any, any thought as to what might fall out of the woodwork and whether we're resourced to um, deal with this issue? And I thought, well, I said, no, sorry, I, I haven't really given it that uh, amount of thought, but we'll adjourn this meeting and we'll come back in a couple of weeks when I have given it some thought. But of course, and there's many excuses, many reasons why um, meetings don't get re-adjourned. And basically the, the issue faded off and I think people were quite happy not to actually uh, to have that meeting re-adjourned. What actually fell out of the woodwork was um, the deputy principal at a school six minutes down the road was sexually abusing young boys. He's now um, not 50 k's away from here, 30, 40 k's away from here in Nimitaka prison where he, where he deserves to be. Uh, also, in November of 2013, when I was enjoying a, a two-year weekend from Parliament, not having got elected back in 2011, I was sitting watching TV when the Roastbusters issue came on. And uh, I was sitting there, and my, our former colleague, Carol Beaumont, was on um, one of the uh, news shows saying that this is really unacceptable behaviour by these young men. And I thought, there and then, she's not getting any cut through. Where are the men in Parliament? Where are, where are all the men in Parliament, the Prime Minister, all the leaders of the parties? Why aren't we as men, or why aren't they as men, jumping up and down about the issue of sexual violence? And it was there and then, and the, my lazy boy at home, uh, I made the vow that if I ever got back into Parliament, I'd be uh, a man to stand up and speak out about sexual violence. So, having got back into Parliament, we organised the hikoi from the Harbour Bridge up to Cape Reinga, um, walking 440 kilometres in 16 days. Last year we walked seven marathons in seven days around Kaitaia. Another group uh, walked a marathon around Kaikuhi and another group around Ngāti Whātua, just to raise awareness around sexual violence. Sexual violence is one of the greatest inhibitors of human potential, and if not the greatest uh, inhibitor of human potential in the country. Therefore, it's essential that we stand up and we do what we can to stamp this uh, rampant disease out of the country. For want of a better word, sorry, there's probably better ways to describe it. <coughs> so to the bill. To the bill, um, Mr Speaker. Well, we're here debating this bill because there was a mistake by the government last year, not some six months ago. And we shouldn't be here and we shouldn't be making mistakes where, um, that it may allow a sexual offender to not be held to account and not to have to, um, not to be held to account by the law, in this case, be added to that uh, sexual offender's register. I take what the Deputy Prime Minister is saying and that this isn't about adding new provisions to, to an act, but the reality is this should have all been addressed first time around and here we are going through this again. You know, one in three girls in New Zealand are sexually abused before she turns 16. One in seven boys, and I have to make that, make that known that um, boys also are sexually offended against uh, by both men and women. One in five New Zealand women, young people between 16 and 24 are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted. Sexual offending uh, is 
responsible for just about every form of mental unwellness going. It is essential that we don't keep coming back into Parliament to fix up mistakes around these sorts of bills, that we get it right first time. Uh, my, my heart goes out to anybody and everyone who has been um, sexually violated in some way, and I just take my hat off to the survivors who are doing the best they can uh, in the circumstances that they find themselves in. That's why we as politicians, as parliamentarians, we have to get this right and we have to do it right uh, and get our laws right at the very start. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're here. It's unfortunate that, as uh, my colleague Stuart Nash says, that in the previous process, somebody, some official, some members of parliament uh, never picked up the, uh, the gap in the legislation that would allow some people who have been um, convicted but yet to be sentenced of an offence to, to uh, miss out on the register. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't intend to, uh, to speak for much longer other than to, just to reinforce what I'm saying, that we as parliamentarians need to get this right. We as parliamentarians, and I, and I urge my male colleagues from across, across the House to uh, stand up and be counted when it comes to speaking out about sexual violence. Just uh, incidentally, this week is the Orange Light Week, 4th to the 10th of March, um, which is also about domestic violence and these elements of sexual violence in, in amongst much domestic violence. Uh, but I, I do commend this bill to the House. We do support it, but let's get it right first time. Kia ora. Maureen Pugh.